G'day guys, uh, Schaefer 400 test drive. I uh, got the Volvo 320 horsepower D4s on board today. This boat has an option of D6s or the triple 300 Mercs, which uh, looks exciting as well. I've already tested a couple of Schaefers on the channel, so I'll actually leave a link. Uh, I'll pop it up on the screen now and leave it in the description below to the V33, which was quite a fun boat to test uh, last summer, actually. Um, and this is cool, modern, fun sports cruiser stuff with an amazing transom on this boat, which is awesome for Sydney Harbour entertaining. Uh, but I'm just going to get the boat moving, as you do. Trim tabs in the up position, legs in the down position. I've got 25% of fuel on board, 9.5 tonnes worth of boat, 800 of fuel, um, total capacity, 250 water and about 100 plus of holding tank, which uh, I assume is empty. And let's get moving. Um, that's just sitting on a GPS speed of about 10 knots, making some waves. So we can assume eight knots is your speed for no wash zone. Let's just give it some acceleration here. So I've got the trim tabs up. I'm just doing that deliberately to see how much bow raise on acceleration and I'm at the seated position right now. So I got the revs up to about 2,700 there, 2,900, and even little Dan Jones with his short legs, at 2,700 revs, I can still see over the bow, just. So it's actually not a problem. If I wanted to improve that, just give it a little trim tab down there, and yeah, no props. Actually, that feels great. That feels great. So that's giving me a good old cruising speed. I've got it in kilometers. So we can say that's about 22 knots there. And feels good. Feels good. That noise levels are, are perfectly acceptable for a boat of this style. And I'm just gonna speed the boat right up. Because I've got the wind behind me today, I want the drone to keep up with this. Let's just get moving. It's a cold, windy, southerly kind of day here today in Sydney and um, perfect reason to have a cabin wrap around glass style of boat like this. That's um, where the whole market's been going and that's essentially where most people want to be. You don't want to be mucking around with side clears and that sort of stuff on a boat uh, these days because nobody has the time for it. So yeah, just rolling through 3,200 revs my fuel flow is at 106 litres an hour. We're really moving. Now we're hitting, so that's at a 54 kilometre per hour on the GPS. Sorry, I should have changed it to knots, uh, but we can assume that's, uh, what's that, about 28 odd knots. And coming through some waves, there's four metre swells offshore today. So I'm just gonna stick into this moderately protected area because I won't really be able to give you any accurate speed numbers if I go out into that swell there. It's too aggressive today. Heel angles are good. The boat feels quite fun. Like, I think when you drive a sports yacht or a sports cruiser of this style, um, be it a Brazilian make like this or a European make, they are lighter boats. They're quite efficient through the water, so you don't burn as much fuel for your day out but you do feel the fun factor. Like when you hook it through turns like this, I've just got a couple of boats there, I'm just gonna stay clear of. And when you get out there and enjoy your day, which is the whole idea of doing this, the boat really gives you a lot of feedback. So good heel angle. I just gotta pop my head down a little bit just here on the right hand turn or turning to starboard. I'm doing that at a considerable speed, uh, 3,200 revs. And I'm actually just gonna come off the speed a little bit as we head upwind. There we go. So you just gotta move your head a little bit to the side just to make sure that this pillar doesn't give you uh, any, or too much of a blind spot, but it's not the end of the world. All boats of this style are gonna do that. And then I'll just come back to a moderate speed of 3,000 revs, giving me 49 kilometers per hour. And that's a fuel flow of 90 liters. That feels like a fast cruise on this boat. And let's uh, just get around the corner here. I've just got one ferry in front of me, which I want to avoid. And then I'm gonna do a few turns upwind and just feel the boat into this swell. So I'm gonna drop the trim tabs a little bit, expose more of the cutting action 
of the bow into the waves because I'm now going into the wind and into southerly chop. And let's start putting the boat through a few turns. Yeah, quite pleasant. You know, for a, what is quite a large sports cruiser, once you're getting to 40 feet, you really can do a lot with 40 feet in terms of accommodation, in terms of entertainment out the back. We will be doing a walkthrough on this boat, so stay tuned and we will link to that at the end of the video if you wanna see what the layout and features are like on this one. I'm going straight into another boat's wash right now and it's just sending the waves out midships with one quarter trim tab down going upwind. The attitude of the bow is still really manageable. I'm gonna to flip to the stand up bolster here. I've got a skiff out here doing some training so I wanna try and avoid him. And oh, look at this. This is a fun way to drive. So if you stand up, the pillar, even for my stature, I can see over. So if I can, I can adjust the bow a little bit, drop it down, and then I've got a really good clear line of sight. This would be really fun on a hot summer's day. Just sitting up here and enjoying the world and letting the, the wind blow in your hair. I think a lot of people really want that, but it's nice having the option. You can sit down, stay warm, stay out of the wind on the hot days, open this hard top roof and enjoy yourself. With the throttle set back, um, about six inches from the wheelbase, it feels comfortable. And then there's obviously facility for the joystick to go forward of that, should you choose it. And the bow thruster is in a logical place as well. So I'm gonna actually operate both of those just in here. So let's cruise on in. So I didn't have, I don't have the uh, nautical miles, it's in kilometers, but it looks like this boat's an easy 33 knots, maybe more. Cruising fast speed of 27, 28, and cruising efficiently 22, 25, and that's in nautical miles. And she's got a lot of, she's got a lot of, of torque. So when you give it some, I'll just, yeah, when you give it some like that, you really do feel the pickup. So that tells me, <coughs> If you load this boat up with some of your heavy friends and stick them in the back of the cockpit there, you will still have enough power in reserve to get this boat up on the plane without, without hanging your stern around too much, without uh, sitting the boat on this awkward angle like you see some people sort of plowing their way down the waterways, down the harbour because the boat doesn't have enough power to get the thing out of the hole and up on plane. So, um, this definitely does, considering I accelerated the boat with no trim tab, um, that means if I had 10 people in the cockpit here, or eight people, I could just give it a little bit of trim tab, give it full revs, and the boat's gonna get up and moving really, really quickly, and it's gonna then trim nicely and sit on plane as I desire it to. So I'm just gonna put the... Okay, so let's just put the bow into the wind. I'm just gonna test the slow speed maneuverability of this. So we'll just stop the boat. Okay. All right, so uh, one observation, this is a very comfortable seating position from a slow speed maneuvering perspective. I can just nestle myself into this corner here. My throttle hand sits on the throttle and if you just swing your arm out here, it's quite a natural place to be. And what that allows me to do is get good clear visibility forward, clear visibility aft. And because my shoulders are oriented um, you know, bow to stern like this, you have a full almost 180 to 270 degree view of the boat. And if you move your head, you can do 360. So look at this, feel that torque. This thing just goes around like it's no tomorrow. That's easy. And then if I just added a bit of bow thruster to that, oh, sorry, I just turned that off. Okay. Yeah, that's so easy. So. Some boats can be a little bit underpowered when it comes to this slow speed maneuvering stuff. This boat is not. You know, you could get this into a marina in a close quarters situation and just slot it in if you choose because we're just doing transverse thrust here. Imagine if you add some wheel input and you just pull the boat left and right, touch it with a little bit of bow thruster 
and that's going to be easy peasy Japanesey. Um, add to that the option of the joystick, don't even need to think about it. From a standing position, flip up the bolster. Obviously, if you had a passenger or a navigator next to you, they would have to move because this is the single flip up. So that might be something you just got to think about in advance. But um, in terms of space between me and the wheel, that's good. That's adjustable just there. And I can see heaps from this standing position, but also from the seated position, the design of that opening just there gives me good and clear visibility to the transom. So for what is quite a large swim platform, which is one of the features of this boat, um, as a driver, I can see the thing. Because <laughs> some boats you can't, and that's how you, you wallop them on the dock, and that's embarrassing. So that's sensible, I like that. Let's, um, let's take this boat somewhere out of the wind and give you a detailed walkthrough. Um, if you like this content and you wanna see more, subscribe, give us a like, consider supporting the Patreon. My name's Dan Jones, this has been Dan's Boat Life. Thank you, I'll see you on the next one.